Guys, welcome! You're watching Philby Gaming, and this is this week's dose of Red Dead Redemption 2. Before I get in, I want to say a massive thank you to my incredible viewers for the comments they left and the feedback they gave, which in turn led to the making of today's content. Before we get in, I want to quickly make you all aware that there are spoilers ahead for the game. Somewhat similar to the Abigail Atreta video, we're going to be taking a look at the villainous Micah Bell, and some of the things that occur during the game that may possibly point out on how he was betraying the Vandalin gang all along. Now I know that some of you are instinctively thinking that we all know he's the traitor, but of course, as pointed out by Agent Milton, Micah didn't side with the Pinkertons until after the gang returned from Guama, and talking about a possible betrayal way before all of this. Remember this is only speculation, but I think the points made in today's video may possibly give you some food for thought. After studying through my comment section, and going back and replaying many missions in Red Dead Redemption 2, there are a couple of details that may have been overlooked by some, and today we're going to go through them. This theory will only be going to the point where the Pinkertons picked up Micah, as we already know of his treachery afterwards. Micah Bell III was born in 1860. Not much is known about his history, but we do know that his father, also called Micah, and his brother, Amos, and Micah himself, were all a family of thieves who weren't above committing murder. When Micah was just 17, he and his father ended up on the run from the law after a brutal double homicide of a lady named Jean Briggs and her husband Roscoe. The pair were found hanging from the rafters of their home, both with their throats cut. Later in life, Micah and his brother Amos would part ways, with Amos wishing to leave the life of crime behind him. It is told by Micah, Amos was living somewhere in California with his wife and daughters. The part between the two didn't end well, with Amos claiming that if Micah were to ever contact him, things wouldn't end well for him. This was shown after Micah sent a letter to Amos, and was sent one in return, that read the following. Micah would then set out on his own. Before the events of 1899, Micah had already formed a little posse of outlaws. It consisted of himself, Cleet, Joe and Norman. The group ran amok together, but soon separated after a bank job that he went wrong somewhere in the south. In 1898, at a bar named Crenshaw Hills, somewhere in the Grizzlies, in walks one Dutch Vandalin. Dutch was attempting to sell off some gold that his gang had recently stolen, but the deal went wrong. An altercation occurred with Micah, who was also at the bar, stepping in and saving Dutch's life. Because of this, he was accepted into the Vandaling gang with open arms. Now we all know Micah to be ruthless and to care for no one but himself, so why would he choose to put himself at risk for a stranger in a bar? More on that later. As you will know, Micah was highly disliked in the gang, particularly by Arthur, who had no issue expressing his feelings towards him. But Dutch, after having his life saved, chose only to see the good side of Micah. A highly skilled fighter, but with the tendency to be reckless and hot-headed. Micah would continue to work with the gang, and after almost half a year, by his suggestion, he convinced Dutch to attempt a heist on a ferry in Blackwater. The ferry job was a bad idea, as the Pinkertons turned up immediately and an intense firefight ensued. This led to both the disappearance and deaths of several of the gang members. Missing was both John Marston and Sean McGuire, and dead was Jenny Kirk and the Calendar Boys, Davy and Mac. Mac's death wasn't learned until later on. Jose had expressed to Dutch afterwards how he knew it was a bad idea, but Dutch just became defensive, claiming everybody makes mistakes. Jumping a little forward, Michael and Lenny are sent west by Dutch to scout on ahead. Only Lenny returns, telling that Michael has been imprisoned in Strawberry. Then he goes on to say that Michael was leading him around, constantly deflecting any questions he had and that they had met up with a couple of people, one of whom Micah knew from previous. Micah got drunk and ended up getting into a brawl with the found friends, and proceeded to shoot one of them. Now here's the first instance that shows Micah may have been betraying the Vandalin gang. Although Lenny hadn't mentioned who the friends were, as he may not have known, when Dutch asks Arthur to retrieve Micah from the Strawberry Jail, upon arrival, the sheriff tells Arthur two of the men fighting were both awaiting the hanging. Now let's process this for a moment. Micah was arguing with his friends from a time before Dutch, kills one of them, and is now in a cell with the other. When rescued, Micah decides to kill the other friend, right where he stands. But why would he do this? When Arthur questions him, Micah goes on to say that his cellmate was an old Driscoll. Right there. Micah admits that he was previously associated with at least one of the members of Dutch's rival gang. Now I understand that people may think that the one friend Micah knew might not have been the old Driscoll, but later, after Micah's rescue, he invites Arthur to do a stagecoach robbery with him, claiming he got the information after hearing one of the old Driscolls yapping about it inside. There were only two people in that jail cell, Micah and said old Driscoll. 
So why would the OJS Club just willingly give up such valuable information if the pair weren't previously associated? The theory continues in Strawberry and it's at Micah's Hermit Camp just outside of town. After you perform the stage called Robbery, in the mission named An American Pastoral Scene, Michael will return to the Vandalin Gang as he feels he's earned his way back in. But if you return to the little hermit camp that Michael was at, you can find something very interesting. Rummage through the belongings left behind by Micah and you'll find a bouncy poster. And this poster is for no other than Dutch Vandalin himself. Something more interesting on this is that Dutch's bounty is set for $1,000. Now think to when Agents Milton and Ross confront Arthur during his fishing trip with Jack. Milton informs Arthur that there is a 5,000 bounty out for him alone. Bear in mind that Arthur is only a high gun, and if Arthur's bounty is currently set at 5 grand, Dutch's bounty is surely a lot more. So why is this poster that Michael is holding set only at 1,000? This implies that the bounty on Dutch was an old one, which would indicate that Micah has had his eye on Dutch for a long time now long before they first met at the Crenshaw Hills bar. This could certainly explain why Micah saved Dutch during the altercation, leading to his entry into the Vandalin gang. Micah is a survivor, as he puts it himself. He is sadistic, selfish, wild and unpredictable. He seems to constantly put other gang members in danger and doesn't care whether they make it through or not, as long as he receives his pay. This is shown when he almost got Lenny killed in Strawberry, the Blackwater Ferry heist, and even when he sends both Bill and Arthur to Van Horn to collect dynamite, casually just sitting around instead of helping them. There are many, many instances. Does this lack of remorse and caring remind you of anyone? Colm O'Driscoll Both Micah and Colm have so many similarities. Both are ruthless, neither care about their respective gangs, and are always willing to sacrifice others for personal gain. Now it's a bit of a coincidence that wherever the Vandalin gang ends up, the old Driscoll gang are always nearby. Now this may be Rockstar implementing this for gameplay purposes, but if not, it certainly raises some questions. Now fast forward a little to the mission titled Blessed Are The Peacemakers. In the opening scene to this, the camp's cook, Pearson, tells how he met one of the old Driscolls and has been informed that Colm, their leader, wants a parlay with Dutch to put an end to years of fighting once and for all. Hosea Matthews claims it'll be a trap, and everybody else believes the same. Even Dutch himself is very sceptical. That is, until Micah convinces him otherwise. Now why would Micah have such an interest in making peace with the rival gang? Again, we are going back to him only being in it for personal gain. At the meet, during the conversation between Colm and Dutch, Colm informs his adversary that the Pinkertons offered him a price to turn Dutch in. Of course it was a trap, as we learn when Arthur, who was overseeing, gets ambushed and kidnapped. When Colm is interrogating Arthur, he tells him how he made a deal with the police force, and he has a plan knowing that an angry Dutch will bring the whole gang here to come and rescue Arthur, and the law will be waiting for them. Dutch and Micah walked away from the meet unscathed. Dutch under the impression that the truce was official, but what does Micah believe to be the outcome? Did he know about the ambush, and was he playing dumb to the whole thing? Was Micah somehow involved in this? Is he secretly working alongside Colm? It again begs the question, why was Micah so desperate to make this meet happen? Maybe he was finally hoping to collect on Dutch's bounty. Another small hint towards this is the title of the mission, Blessed Are The Peacemakers. It's somewhat similar to the name of the mission from Chapter 2 where we had to rescue Micah, Blessed Are The Meek. That one right there may have been Rockstar's way of giving us a hint early on. Jumping forward to the end of Chapter 3, when young Jack is kidnapped by Catherine Braithwaite as a ransom for all the trouble her gang has caused, Dutch and the boys head on over to the mansion to confront her. But just before they do, while still at their own camp, Micah and Kieran are ordered with staying behind on guard. Upon their return, they are greeted by the Pinkerton agents, Milton and Ross. Now I've done the theory video on how it was possible that Abigail had led them there, but Micah was supposed to be standing guard. So how did they get in without him alerting the rest of the gang? During this confrontation, Milton offers the rest of the gang their freedom, telling them to run off. You will notice that the entire gang surround the Pinkertons, everybody except Micah, who we find towards the end of the scene is set back against a tree avoiding the entire confrontation. There is also another scene here which I think may depend on your honor level and it has Micah join up with the gang against the Pinkertons but he lowers his weapon as soon as Agent Milton mentions that he'll be returning with 50 men. I did have to use somebody else's clip for this but they will be given full credit. This may be the point where Micah realizes that siding with the Pinkertons is the best option for survival and it's possible that after returning from Guama, he actually turns himself over to the Pinkertons and offered to work undercover for them. 
We all know the story of what happened after Guame, that much is fact, and this is only a theory video, so I'll leave the game itself to tell the rest of the story. Let's quickly summarise some points. I think Micah's goal all along was to be rid of Dutch. He always wanted to be the leader of a gang, such as he was with Cleet, Joe and Norman. As the game progresses, you can see that Micah has Dutch in his pocket and basically makes most of the decisions for him. He thrives in chaos and has a lust for blood. He doesn't care who lives or dies as long as he prospers. A primary example of this is when Abigail is captured and he just wants to leave her behind, convincing Dutch she's just a girl. He's always making prejudiced comments towards Lenny and Charles and is always mean to Jack. Even when Arthur is sick and dying, Micah is always berating him and mocking his illness. Not to mention what we think he may have done to the gang's pet dog, Kane. His end game, I believe, was to turn Dutch in. Originally for the payout, but after teaming up with the gang and seeing just how large and competent they all were, bear in mind he'd only run a small group before, his plans changed and he aimed to take over leadership. The aim of this video was to give you a different perception of the events before Guama, so let me know what you guys think. Even though it's all speculation, do you think Micah was betraying the gang even before the Pinkertons got to him? Was there anything I might have missed? Let me know below. Today's video took heavy inspiration from my incredible community via the comment section, so if you guys have any thoughts or theories, please feel free to share. If you enjoyed this and wish to see more content of the same nature, hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications to be the first alerted to new videos. To get in touch, you can either use the comment section or follow me over on Instagram or TikTok, whichever you prefer. Thank you all for watching, especially those who made it to the end, and I hope to see you all in the next one.